Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's release day for Hour of Devastation, which means it's time for us to crack open this sweet box and see if we can get lucky, find some solemnities, some mythics, some invocations. So we're going to give it a shot. While I'm opening this up, I want to let you know we have a contest that's starting, going through the end of the month to give away a box of Hour of Devastation. So if you're interested, make sure to follow the link in the description, and it'll take you to the giveaway. You'll be able to enter stuff like subscribing to the YouTube, uh, Twitter, things like that. So keep that in mind if you're interested. Your chance to win a your very own box, worldwide giveaway, by the way. So anyway, we got our box open. Let's crack some packs. I'm a little nervous because Hour of Devastation is not a high value set it is kind of a moderate to low value set and gonna have to get a little, a little bit lucky to actually make our money back so we got our packs and yeah i guess it's a uh, time to get to it so first off first pack hour of devastation like usual we're just gonna kind of skim through the commons and uncommons uh especially the commons which are pretty much worthless. So we start off with Doomfall, Torment of Scarabs, Inferno Jet, Hazarat's Undying Fury, and, ooh, Full Art Forest. Full Art Forest is pretty sweet. Uh, Hazarat's Undying Fury, not super exciting. On to pack number two. So there's not a ton of value to open in this set. There's some good, well, okay mythics. So I think that's what we're mostly hoping for, is good mythics. Ooh. A lot of cards in this pack. I got a feeling we might have a, uh... Something. A foil? An invocation would be the best. Bloodwater Entity. Crypt. Obla Spider. Ooh, Throne of the God Pharaohs. Alright. So we have a foil, I believe. Foil. Oh, no, it's a planes. Alright. Foil. Foil. Angel of the God Pharaoh. So, eh, I mean, we got a foil. Not an exciting foil, but... Throw the, uh, God's Pharaoh's Gift. Fun card for Commander. Not especially valuable, though. Next pack. We have... Bunch of commons. Nissa's Defeat. A riddle form. Consigned to Dream. Driven to Despair. And another full art. Ooh, and the Champion of Wits token. There are some cool extra tokens... Well, that's our second full art. I guess that counts as something. No mythics yet. No high value rares. Pack number four. Get through this stuff. Imaginary threats. Bloodwater entity. Desert sold. Adorn pouncer. Not a bad eternalized card. And a normal planes. All right. Well, so far, I think we've opened. Zero dollars and zero cents worth of value. <laughs> oh, Hour of Devastation. Okay, let's get to the uncommons. Crypt of the Eternal. Farm to market. Consigned to Oblivion. Dream Stealer. Good with pump spells. And Lifelink Cat Token. Alright, no mythics. No high value stuff. Not much to write home about so far. So, really, to come out ahead in this box, really need an invocation. That's kind of the moral of the story with this set. Invocation or bust. Ipnu Rivlet. Unraveling Mummy. Tenacious Hunter. Endless Sands. Our first desert, or rare desert, at least. And a unique token. Alright, still no mythics. Not even a third of the way through, though, so we still have a ways to go. Hopefully, 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 our luck will turn around. At least, like, some good mythics. We could settle for that. Strategic Planning is a sweet common reprint. Sunset Pyramid, Ifner Dreadlands, Vile Manifestation, Ramen Up Excavator. That's actually one of the best rares in the entire set. And a super sweet rare. I'm excited to play that card, especially in Modern. But that's a decent one. I think it's the highest value rare in the set. This pack felt heavy as soon as I opened it up. So let's see if that actually means something, or if I'm just going crazy. Chandra's Defeat, Angel of the God Pharaohs, Inferno Jet, 
Hour of Eternity. One. Oh. All right. No, it doesn't mean anything. Hour of Eternity. Some blue reanimation. Also, not very high value. So still Ofer as far as mythics are concerned. Next pack. We're not even a third of the way through yet, though. Get through these commons. Crook of Condemnation. Good sideboard card. Uh, Sunscreen Champion. Good sideboard card. Eternal Farce Juice. Hour of Revelation. The new Best Wrath and Standard. Maybe. Maybe Hour of Devastation, but I think Hour of Revelation's on the list. Pretty powerful to kill all the vehicles along with all the creatures and also all the planeswalkers. Alright, commons, commons. Another farm to market. Dunes of the Dead, Obelisk Spider, Nicole Bolas, the God Pharaoh, Mythic number one, and it's a good one. <laughs> well, that has things looking up. Single best non-masterpiece that we could open from the set, so uh, we'll definitely take that. That's some value for us. Next pack. Let's get some more Nicole Bolas's. I'd be happy about that. Mescore Eternal, Steward of Solidarity, Overcome, Abandoned Sarcophagus, and weird punch-out card. Eh, alright. Abandoned Sarcophagus is another card that I'm looking forward to playing with. Jeez, have we opened, like, has our first common, I'm gonna have to watch this video, I feel like our first common has been Firebrand Archer for, like, five packs in a row. Maybe I'm misremembering, but Crypt of the Eternals, I know we've had a ton of these. Merciless, uh, Eternal, Saving Grace, Razaketh the Foul-Blooded, another Mythic, sweet, and a Horse Token. These might actually be worth something, since they're attached to a Mythic, and pretty sure the Horse is actually really good. So it's probably worth saving your Horse Tokens if you open them. At least I'm planning on it. Alright, two Mythics so far. Uh, Hepesh Oasis, and actually, Razaka the Foul-Blooded is not that low value. Bantu's Last Reckoning, decent rare. See if it ends up being good in Constructed, but it's at least sweet. Three Mana Wrath. We'll see, the drawback is interesting. It's the kind of card you gotta play with to really get a feel for how powerful it is. Life Goes On, good sideboard card. River Hoopo. Uh, Eternal of Harsh Truce, Struggle to Survive, Leave to Chance... Want to play that one with Pure Steel Paladin? Also, Ether Flux Reservoir. All right, we're one-third of the way through our box. And so far, I mean, we haven't got a Masterpiece, but we've gotten the best Mythic, and Razakath is not a bad Mythic, so we can't really complain so far. And we got a Ruminop Excavator, which is one of the best rares, so... Unconventional Technus, uh... Ruminop Ruins, Omnia Sphinx, Urshinkle Shaker Kenra, and some Jank. We haven't gotten a foil rare mythic yet. We haven't gotten many foils at all. I think we've got one foil uncommon. Farm to market, quarry beetle, omnia sphinx, hour of promise. I, this card's starting to get some hype for a green red ramp deck in standard. I think Todd Anderson over at Star City has been writing about the possibility of green red ramp. Could be sweet. All right, next pack. Bloodwater Entity, Nissa's Defeat, Doom Diviner, and Grind to Dust. Eh, another cat token. So Grind to Dust isn't bad. I think the Aftermath cards from Hour are definitely better than Amon Cat, but we'll have to see if that's enough to really make them constructed playable at all. Merciless Eternal, Devotee of Strength, Ifner Deadlands, Second Adorn Pouncer, and some stuff. Uh, Alright, so doubling up on Adorn Pouncer... Good, we can build Cat Tribal. We even have the cat tokens for it. Uh, Field to Authority, Sifter Worm, Burning Fist Minotaur, Torment of Hailfire, everyone's favorite Punisher card, and, well, a full art land. I thought there was a foil. Man, we're, like, not opening foils in this box. I think we're about halfway through and we have a single uncommon foil out of our whole box. Which is not a lot. Normally you see more than that. Maybe we'll have a ton in the second half of our box. Angel of the God Pharaoh, Sinuous Striker, <laughs> Sinuous Striker, Devotee of Strength, Majestic Matriarch, or Mariarch, Mythic number three, and I like this one. It's not high value, but I'm excited to play it. Ooh, all right, that's not a bad foil. Full art, Nicole Bolas Island. 
That's got to be worth something. I assume the foils of the Full Art Lands. I haven't actually checked the price, but got to be worth something. So that's actually not a bad pack. A Mythic and a Foil Full Art. The Nicole Bolas Lands do look pretty good. All right, what do we got here? Razakus Wright, Riddle Form, Claim to Fame, the best uncommon from the set. We'll save that one. And a Champion of Wits. Been getting a bit of hype as being maybe better than people think it is. Card draw. Can never go wrong with card draw. And moving on, almost two-thirds of the way through our box now. We have Bloodwater Entity. Lots of those. Liliana's Defeat. Sand Strangler. And Drew with eyes wide open. Another full art and a Dream Stealer token. Uh, Dejru could be good for, like, a Planeswalker-y commander deck. Probably in the 99, but still a pretty sweet card. Moving on, we have, still not many foils, Resolute Survivors, Oasis, Scum Scourge Champion, Resilient Kenra, I see a foil, Torment of Venom, All right. well, a fine removal spell, I guess, for Limited, and a Kenra. Next pack, one more pack in the second third of a box, three Mythics so far, no Invocations. The Hoopo, Tenacious Hunter, Desert Sold, and Uncage the Menendry. Alright, Mythic number four. Again, not a high value mythic, but a mythic nonetheless. So we'll take it. Four mythics getting to about average. Four to five mythics typically in a box. Uh next pack. Unconventional Tactics, Jace's Defeat, Desert Sold, Solemnity, my favorite card from the set, a sleeper from the set, also Full Art Land. Uh, don't mind opening Solemnity, that's a card I want to have access to. Entering the final third of our box. So what do we want in this final third? Masterpiece, of course, at the top of the list. Uh, a good foil, rare mythic would be nice, we haven't got a foil rare mythic. More Mythics, we'll never complain about those. Gideon's Defeat, Sinuous Striker, Bane Whip Punisher, Sameth Attested, the worst Planeswalker, but still a Planeswalker, and Mythic number five, and we have a Foil. Foil, Foil, Seer of Last Tomorrows, all right, well, eh, Sameth's not bad. I mean, it's a Mythic, five Mythics in our box. That's, we're to the above average side of things, which is sweet. So, I'd be surprised if we get another Mythic. Six would be a lot. But you never know. Could hit a Foil Mythic. Could still hit Invocation. Magmaroth, a Braid. Another good common and uncommon. Ooh, Solemnity number two. Well, if we're going to double up on rares, Solemnity is a rare that I don't mind doubling up on. Has value, and it really feels like a sleeper. And I just love that card. So much fun to play with. Next back... Doomfall, Resolute Survivors, Ramanop Ruins, Hollow One, maybe some modern potential, and another full art. Okay, sure. Well, we're getting down near the end. We might have five packs to go after this one. Not a whole lot left. Ooh, a Cursed Horde, Fervent Paincaster, Unraveling Money, Mummy, Chaos Maw, and Frailed Sandwalla, and a full art as our foil. Eh, all right. Well, still haven't got a foil rare or mythic. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Two more packs, and we're to the final five of our box. Come on! Hour of Devastation box. Sinuous Striker, Vile Manifestation, Vizier of the True, Swarm Intelligence, and... <laughs> we got our foil rare, the... <laughs> the classic double swarm intelligence pack. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I can see some commander play, so there's probably some demand for foil swarm intelligence, even though it's not a high-end rare by any means. But it is a foil rare. Imaginary threats, eternal of harsh truths, claim to fame, not bad, and refuse to cooperate, it's aftermath.pack. And we've gotten a lot of full arts, it feels like. I feel like we've gotten more full arts than we should. All right, final five packs. The countdown is on. Pack five. Still hoping for the lucky masterpiece to close things out. That would be amazing. Cory Beetle. Ipnu Rivlet. Shevet Dunes. Oketra's Last Mercy. Well, that's our first Oketra's Last Mercy. Could be a sweet combo with Sanguine Bond in Modern. 
Also, just a sideboard card to gain a bit of life. Actually, a big bit of life. Supreme Will, good card to play, not very valuable. Dagger of the Worthy, Liliana's Defeat, and Emmet Eternal. Maybe a sleeper. I mean, lots of stats for the Admin Eternal. I don't know, Zombies is so overloaded in the three-drop slot. I'm not sure if it'll actually end up being playable, just because there's so many options. Maybe after rotation. All right, final three packs. Chandra's Defeat, Vizier of the Anointed, Struggle to Survive, Ramanup Hydra, and nothing. Eh, all right. Ramanup Excavator, a little more exciting, but Hydra, Desert Deck. Could be good. Two packs to go. Running out of time for our masterpiece, if we're going to find one. Hope Tender, Sunset Pyramid, Saving Grace, a rare Eminent Doom, possible against the odds uh, possibility. All right. Very last pack of Hour of Devastation. We've reached the very, very end. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Oh. I think we got a bonus. Well, let's see. Uncommon. 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 Yep, it looks like we do. So our rare is Angel of Condemnation. Ah, fun card. Not a great card. Two cards to go. I think this is the land. There's a planes. And we have a foil. One last shot for a masterpiece. Could we get the masterpiece at the very end? Well, look at... Do you see? That looks weird. Uh, God's Pharaoh's faithful. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, not a masterpiece, but, eh, life gain. It's something. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our Hour of Devastation box. So, you already know the prices, because I keep track of them as the video goes along, but I'm gonna calculate it up. I'll be back in just a minute with a wrap up. Alright, so let's briefly wrap up our Hour of Devastation booster box opening. So, as you know from watching, finished with just over $82 in value, which in some sense would be disappointing. If we cracked an $82 box of Cons of Tarkir, I would be crushed. But, considering this is Hour of Devastation, and if you don't crack a masterpiece, the EV is only like 60 bucks, just over 60 bucks. 82 bucks is actually a big winner. So while it feels weird to be excited about technically coming out behind, you get a $100 box, you get 82 bucks back. So why it feels weird to be disappointed about that, I think in the end, it's actually a pretty solid non-masterpiece box of Hour of Devastation. So, how do we get to $82 and change? Well, the big winner, Nicole Bolas, 20 bucks, by far our best card from the entire box, and actually, if we're not opening a crazy mythic foil or a masterpiece, it's just the best card to open in the entire set value-wise. So, super happy there. Then we had a bunch of mythics. One of the upsides of our box, five mythics, which is a little bit above average. Average is 4.5, so a little bit on the high side of average, and the mythics weren't bad. There's a lot of weird semi-low value mythics in the set, but Razakath and Samet are kind of in the middle, upper echelon of mythics value-wise, and Majestic Mariark and Uncaged the Manageré are not the very bottom of the barrel. So five mythics, some decent mythics, everything's good there. As far as the rares, Double Slim was the big winner. They're like five bucks a piece. Bantu's Last Reckoning, Ramanap Excavator, the biggest, most valuable rare in the set at the moment. We didn't get a Fraying Sanity, which has somehow shot up to like six dollars, so that was a bit of a disappointment, but I think we did fine on hitting high-end rares, especially since we doubled up on Solemnity, and if we're going to double up on rares, which happens with small sets, Solemnity is one of the best ones to double up on. We could have doubled up on a bulk rare. I guess we did with the Eternalized Cat, but we could have had way worse rares to double up on. Then just a bunch of okay stuff. This is all like 2 to $3 stuff. The Hours, Torment of Hailfire, Ammon Eternal, Hollow One. Fine. They're not bulk. They have value to them. They are something you can sell or play with. And then kind of our surprise value, I guess, was our Foil Full Art Island, which is like $6. And that kind of made up for the fact that our Foil Rare was Swarm Intelligence and the classic Double Swarm Intelligence pack. And then we got two claim to fames, right about the average for an uncommon, so we can't really complain about that either. The one semi-chase uncommon from the set. So overall, for not getting ultra-lucky and hitting a masterpiece, 
it's a solid box. I can't really complain. It's above average for not getting lucky on a masterpiece. Still, lose a little bit of value, but I'm pretty happy with how the box turned out, considering we didn't win the masterpiece lottery. So, anyway, that brings us to the end of our Hour of Devastation booster box opening. Good news is, we get to do another one, and this one's for one of you for our worldwide Hour of Devastation booster box giveaway. So, if you want a chance to win your very own box of Hour of Devastation, open by me on the channel, you get a shout out, all that sweet stuff. Make sure to follow the link in the description of the video. It'll give you some instructions, following, and subscribing, and all that kind of stuff. And it'll wrap up at the end of the month, and we'll ship it out worldwide to the winner, along with opening on the channel. So, anyway, enjoy the giveaway. Enjoy Hour of Devastation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as well. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.